It's good to be home, huh, Commander? I guess we'll have to give her a name. Welcome aboard the New Normandy, Commander. I've been looking over the dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus, the Solarian professor on Omega. We know the Collectors use some type of advanced technology to immobilize their victims. We'll need him to develop a countermeasure to protect us. Without that countermeasure, we'll be helpless if we ever run into the Collectors. Acquiring Professor Solus seems like the most logical place to start. Who are you? I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer to me as Edie. Hi everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. Yeah, I'm not sure if I like Edie particularly. Why do we need Edie? Shut that thing down. I don't want it on my ship. Have I offended? Shepard spent a great deal of time fighting rogue AI. Geth, mostly. Plus that incident with the Alliance's Hannibal system on Luna. Your distrust is logical, Shepard. Unlike the irrational mistrust of most humans. However, I am no threat to you or anyone else. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. I'm guessing it takes more than just the three of us plus Joker to fly this ship. The Normandy has a full crew. They're at their stations awaiting your orders. Final preparations for takeoff are complete, Commander. When you're ready to go, just pick a destination from the galaxy map and the CIC and I'll plot a course. Jacob and I should return to our posts. Come find us if you have any questions. Okay, so I think it's a good time to meet our crew. Oh, I can't talk to ever so many of the crew up here. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Okay, Kelly. Anything else? Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Joker would like to speak to you on the bridge. Anything else, Commander? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. How do you feel about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the elusive man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh. But Cerberus has noble objectives. 
We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. I think our Duke Nukem Born to Kill outfit looks a little bit ridiculous. And I'm definitely going to change that when I go to check on my private messages. So I don't know if they're going to be like, um, like side quests and stuff. The side quests were pretty naff in Mass Effect 1. And what they've replaced the free roaming with profile. is actually worse, but we'll get to that in a minute. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. Whoa, she is right there. That is pretty brutal. But I've got to say I don't like the idea of... I mean, we already know that Miranda wants to put a control chip in me. And now she's got Edie running the Normandy, so... You know, so it's basically like a control chip for Joker, isn't it? I don't trust them. We still need to move ahead, but it's all too convenient. Maybe you're right. I guess it's hard to argue when they install an AI to spy on us. We're staying though, right? I mean, this seat is real leather. Good to see you're keeping it all in perspective, Joker. Uh, leather? I guess he doesn't know what I'm wearing. Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. I think Cerberus needs to give me a pretty damn high level of classification if he wants me to kill the Reapers for them. How is Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus Cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Well, this is frustrating. Let's discuss something else. Ready. How's this the chugging, actually? I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Restricted functions? Like what? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed, some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Let's discuss something else. Ready. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge, where the navigator plots our FTL vectors, and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. Aha! Uh -huh. That's where we're going next. Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. Uh, actually, we, we didn't. We kind of got blown up. That's all for now. 
Logging you out, Shepard. Yes, the best argument for ED so far is that we did get blown up. Oh, this is the armory, not the med bay. Must be on the wrong floor. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe. As long as the elusive man walks his talk, and you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. It's good to hear a clear opinion. Sounds like we're two of a kind. That honors me more than you, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. I do quite like that Jacob can see that Cerberus... We have legitimate questions about Cerberus. Well, the Death Star is new. This isn't the real ED, is it? What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state, no matter the distance between them. If we alter the state of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. What a load of bollocks. You shouldn't try and explain some of this stuff. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point to point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs, one linked to each world. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. A scientist is required to use the technical laboratory. Okay, that's why we want to get the Solarian first and lock our upgrades and stuff. What's this area of the ship? This is the armory, where small arms are maintained and upgraded. Using OmniTool, computer-aided design and manufacturing, we have the capability to manufacture several new models. Our shotgun seemed a bit naff, we can probably improve that. Welcome aboard, Commander. What's this area of the ship? This is the Combat Information Center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. I now wanted the med bay. Yeah, that's the med bay. But I think I'll get changed first. That's pretty dull. Okay. Unread messages. 
God, there's a million of them. Oh, this is all like crappy DLC. Crappy. It might not be crappy. However, the ones where you can't take the helmet off are crappy. Right, from Councillor Anderson. On the off chance that the rumours are true and you're actually alive, I need you to come and talk with me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put us on top, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Deal with Zaid Masani, Shepherd. We've reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known, and some utterly unknown, military operations in the Terminus systems, and is as feared and as ruthless and relentless a bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I've arranged with him to join you. You will find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee, I've taken care of that personally. Lost contact with survey ship from Project Firewalker. Commander, the MSV Rosalie, a survey ship with Cerberus connections, has gone missing. The survey team was field testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planetside Exploration Rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Case and Dr. Robert O. Loy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship, her survey team and the doctors. The MSV Rosalie was last seen near the planet Zeona in a Lister Ismar frontier. Now I'm pretty sure this is DLC. Commander Shepard. Our scans in the Armada system have brought up something we thought you should see, the final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. We thought this news might be important to you, but we also have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like to honour the Normandy with a monument to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to work on the site. There are 20 crew members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any signs of these lost crewmen, we ask that you report to the Alliance so that those heroes' families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. This is all DLC, you can read it if you want. Shepard, one of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalised, enough that I can't divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Alte, Typhon system, in the Phoenix Massing Cluster. Please use care in this matter. Shepard, we recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts in the Skillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to chase anything down. Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against a Geth scouting party and credited their success to a new advanced electrical attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. The weapon's called an arc projector. I sent it to the Normandy's armory so you can examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's gone through plenty of tests that indicate it overloads kinetic barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well, but laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works, now we want to see what it is it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. Okay, so it seems like the actual content DLC and just the, the overpowered skins and that are all mixed in together. Shepard, at great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief Kasumi Goto and convinced her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her, and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequalled at stealth and infiltration, and her skills will prove invaluable to your mission. Travel to the Zakira ward on the Citadel. There you will find a special ad terminal that differs from the usual. Input the password, Silence is Golden, to begin the rendezvous. Okay, so this is all, um, all our DLC goes into there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to need any of this. Uh, this is probably going to be smaller, let's clear this out first.
What's this area of the ship? Normandy's cargo deck. It includes facilities to rearm and repair Normandy's embarked ground vehicle and shuttle. My last ship didn't need a shuttle. Why do we have one? This ship is nearly twice the mass of the previous Normandy. It is more difficult to land the ship on high gravity worlds. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. God, these both sound really dim. I know he's Scottish, but the woman sounds particularly dim. I'm touring the ship, getting to know my crew. I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Uh, I think maybe he's meant to be Irish. Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. Kenneth, you're complaining. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there's an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected. It's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The Council backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single- Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seem to be doing that. Whoa, that's... I can't believe the Council disregarded my bloody teachings. Ah, I'm gonna have to wipe them out just like I did the last Council. How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was very public with my defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state-of-the-art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the Collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough for me. Carry on. Will do, Commander. I'm amazed Shepard came down to see us. I told you he would. Didn't the last one have, like, um, a Stargate-type portal ring thing? I wonder if I've got a Stargate down here. This is completely different. Oh, that was pretty underwhelming. Chef surprise again? Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. 
That'd be real nice, Mr. Gardner. Okay, this guy's got an attitude on him. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel, you did humanity proud that day. As Sergeant Rupert Gardner here, how can I be of service? You have everything you need. I make do, but have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Oh shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those Namby Pambies on the Citadel. Anything else you'd like to talk about? What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. HVAC, plumbing, non-mission critical electrical, I make sure they're all clean and running. I think that's a bit disparaging. He sounds more like a handyman than a janitor. How did you find your way into Cerberus? Can you believe I was once a family man, working the Ezo rigs along the frontier? I was happy enough, but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt puckers they can't see squat. It'll take good old human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. Yeah, I think we probably need to go and see Captain Anderson first, from what I've heard so far here. What's this area of the ship? The sick bay. It is equipped to provide short-term emergency care. In the event of critical injury, personnel must be transferred to a fully equipped medical facility. Commander Shepard. I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. I'm shocked. You're serving on a Cerberus vessel now? Surprising. Even to me. Yet, here I am. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Yeah, we always got on really well with this woman. Shame she wasn't a romantic option. Do you have everything you need? I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres ice brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. That's the problem with saving things, with saving spirits, is if you don't drink them, people drink them at your funeral, so... Get on and drink spirits, people. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center. A very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines. The creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Skillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. 
Such a game bird. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Access to the AI core is restricted. Okay, I mean, getting a character who can get us back there is probably priority as well. Commander, what can I do for you? You have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to know? Are you military or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific. But we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your... accident were mostly part of our military division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment. And a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the Special Tasks Group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Bullshit. Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. If you think those alien organizations are properly regulated by their government, you're an idiot. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. I think over the course of Mass Effect 1 we, we become slightly less racist, but I think working with Cerberus through the elusive man it's going to put us right back to square one. What makes you think he's got humanity's best interests at heart, rather than his own? How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions, even from brief encounters. He's no saint and he'd be the first to admit it, but he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Oh, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. You're not cocky, you're outright arrogant. What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. Sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe. But I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects a lot from someone with my... abilities. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. And she does have a good bottom. I know you're thinking it. I'm glad she doesn't bang on about her physical um, stuff though, because that would just make her really arrogant and a bit, a bit of a tacky character. Oh, she's a cutie. How old? Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh, 
Uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collector attack, couldn't it? Exactly. It's most important that she have a first birthday. That's why I'm here. I think we might have cleared the ship out then. A bit chuggy. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the recording part or whether it's the game part. Let's just double check I've done everything. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Oh, God damn it. Okay, maybe I haven't. Maybe it's just that I haven't okayed everything. Right, good. Done. Now I can call an end to the episode. Thank you for watching, and come back for the next part of Mass Effect 2. With elaborate secrecy, Cerberus laboured for years to build a new, superior Normandy. The vehicle's many alterations produced a craft nearly double the original size requiring an even larger Tantalus Drive core to compensate. The new Normandy features greater space in living quarters, research laboratory, observation deck, and cargo bay. Its shuttle can make landings the Normandy cannot attempt. In addition to tight beam communicators, Normandy's quantum entanglement communicator, QEC, provides instantaneous contact with the elusive man. The Enhanced Defense Intelligence, AI, coordinates many of the ship's combat functions, assisting and even supplanting human piloting. Potential upgrades are numerous. The airframe could support additional armor and an axial mass accelerator. The thrusters could support recent advances in fuel technology beyond H2O2 chemical rockets. And the hull can mount double the standard number of kinetic barrier projectors, leaving space for stronger shields, easily sustainable via the new EZO Drive core. The Systems Alliance UT-47 drop shuttle landing craft holds 12 soldiers in a cramped, uncomfortable cargo bay and two more in the cockpit. Officially named the Kodiak, the drop shuttle is better known to Alliance Marines as the Combat Cockroach due to its appearance and durability. The vehicle's robust environmental sealant technology exposes few vulnerable parts to the elements. First tested in the sulfuric acid clouds and extreme temperatures of Venus, the Kodiak can land in hard vacuum, high pressure, and temperatures from near absolute zero to over 900 degrees Celsius. A true contragravitic vehicle, the Kodiak's substantial element zero core allows flight by entirely countering the vehicle's mass. Its small thrusters are for directional control only. So if the mass effect field fails, the vehicle becomes a proverbial three million credit coffin. The unarmed shuttle forgoes weaponry space for active masking, electronic countermeasures, and a robust kinetic barrier system, ideal for dropping troops undetected.
For increased tactical control, hold left shift to bring up the power wheel. This pauses the action, giving you time to evaluate the battlefield, target new enemies, or select a power. While an enemy is targeted, highlight a power with the mouse, and then press the left mouse button. You can order each squad member to use a power, allowing you to fire up to three powers at once. The powers will activate when you release left shift and return to real time. After using a power, squad members must wait for their powers to recharge, as indicated by the power status light. On the power wheel, recharging powers are gray, while powers that are currently unnecessary or ineffective against your target are red. Ammunition powers like cryo or incendiary ammo set weapons to enhanced modes. Unity revives fallen squad members, but requires metagel to use. Many attack powers are guided and can be aimed to hit enemies from specific angles and even around corners. To use powers in real time, drag and drop them to the HUD and assign them to the number keys. You can map your squad members' powers in the same way. Press Q and E to order your henchmen to attack, move to cover, or take a position. Hitting C while in this mode will rally your squad members to you. For maximum tactical effectiveness, use squad member powers and your own in combination.